Hey guys, welcome to Liberty in Brief on the Voluntary Virtues Network. My name is Antonio, and today we're going to continue directly from the last episode. So a quick recap of our last, or my first episode. Uh, we discussed the non-aggression principle, coercion, and voluntarism. Um, we're going to go ahead and take a few steps forward um, for this episode. We're going to start picking up the pace, uh, throw a little bit more at you, see what sticks. All right, so jumping right in, let's talk about the non-aggression principle again. All right, so I'm going to throw some examples of uh, infringement upon um, non-aggressionism. Uh, for example, taxation being the most obvious and probably the most um, talked about uh, infringement of the non-aggression principle. Uh, let me explain why uh, taxation is considered a violation of the non-aggression principle. Uh, first and foremost, they are not voluntary. And I, as a libertarian or an anarcho-capitalist or an anarchist, uh, whatever you want to label me, uh, I understand that I own myself. Um, nobody else can own me. I'm not a slave. I'm not a serf. So, if I own myself, therefore I own what I create, or that which I produce or work for, correct? Um, so, my wages. I work hard all day. That's my money. I, It's my service I'm giving to my employer. So, if I own what I create, then why? Can a group of people claim, I guess, the authority to say, you owe me a percent of what you created? Why? Why? Taking a hundred percent of what I created would be considered slavery. Me working for free, basically. So working for 50% of that which I created, someone taking it away from me. Am I not half a slave? 30%. Am I not one-third of a slave? And, and so on and so forth. Some try to say that this is fair. Because of democracy, we're able to vote on how much is taken from us. But the truth about democracy is this. You are constantly at the whim of the majority. The smallest minority being the individual is never represented. Now obviously when voicing your opinion or your opposition to or against democracy or taxation, uh, you're going to run into this common statist argument. Uh, basically, it's the love it or leave it argument. What you're going to be told is this. Well, if you don't like paying taxes and if you don't like democracy, you can move to Somalia or you can leave to some other godforsaken country, right? That's going to be the argument most commonly you're going to hear when voicing any opinion or any negativity towards statism whatsoever. But the thing is, is it's not that I don't want to live somewhere else. It's I don't want to live on a tax farm. I don't want to be on the plantation anymore. I don't want to have my wages stolen from me. No matter which farm I go to, my labor is going to be exploited. Before I forget to mention, um, let me just throw this in there. Uh, I didn't quite mention how democracy um, violates the non-aggression principle. It's basically two out of three um, telling the third person uh, to basically suck it. Take what they want to go around, right? They take a vote, say, you know what? We want everybody to wear a red shirt today. Everybody raise their hand. Two out of three say red shirt. The guy with the blue shirt stuck. And they say, ah, you gotta change it, man. Now, the guy says, I don't wanna change my shirt, man. But now he has to, because democracy has spoken. Um, but too bad for us, uh, they don't vote about shit like that. In our Congress, it's more like, hey, uh, we want to steal this much money from that group. And uh, two-thirds or majority, not necessarily two-thirds, but the majority says, yeah, let's all let's steal from those guys, those assholes that got the money. Um, so it's, it's, it's basically a big fucking gang saying, hmm, whatever we say goes. Uh, and these poor minor the minority, you know. Fuck the minority. <laughs> That's a democratic motto right there. Uh, so, if I can't force my beliefs upon another individual, where do we get this notion that two of us can force our beliefs? You two, me, me and my friend can force our belief on, on another person. Well, no. Well, if we take a vote, well, no, still. It, it's kind of fucked up. Um, it seems like an easy cycle for us to break. I, 
you would think. So, self-defense, for example. If a burglar breaks into your house, you have that right, obviously, to defend yourself, to protect your property and your life. I shouldn't have to move away from the burglar. I shouldn't have to leave my house for him to ravage. I should be able to protect my house and my property, my life, but no. The common argument is, well, you can always leave. Hmm, that's convenient for the burglar. Now, aside from taxation being theft and not being able to defend yourself against burglars, another argument you will hear is, government is here to protect us from monopolies. If it wasn't for, go for government, we would have monopolies. Well, wait, we, we would have monopolies if we had government? Because I'm pretty damn sure we already got those. And government is a monopoly. By definition, government is a monopoly on violence. They reserve the right to use force to get you to do what they say is right or wrong. Or to stop you from doing what they say is wrong. You want to smoke grass? Too bad. We're going to use violence against you to prevent you from smoking grass. Don't want to pay your taxes? We're going to reserve the right to use violence against you to make sure you're going to pay those taxes. And some will say, oh no, they won't use violence against you if you don't pay taxes. Okay, let's run through that. You don't pay taxes. The first thing you do when they finally run down that list of tax evaders, what they're going to do is, they lay on your name, they're going to send you a bill. They're going to say, hey, you owe this much in taxes. You haven't been paying it. What's up with that? Um, by the way, you owe it plus interest. So they add a little bit of extra for you to pay now. So now that you haven't paid the original tax, now they want you to pay a little bit extra. They say, hey, uh, you didn't let us steal this from you. So now we want, we're going to steal originally, plus a little extra. So again, you decide, you know what? No, I'm not going to let you steal from me. I'm not going to take part in this anymore. And so what they do is, okay, we're going to send someone over to collect that money. And they say, hey, uh, you want to give me that money now? No. And what are they going to do now? Now they're going to start using the guns. They're going to say, hey, uh, you got to come with us. Let's go downtown. I'm going to throw you in a cage. You got you to, you know, be in a rape cage for a little bit until you are there long enough to pay off this fee. Well, no, I don't want to be kidnapped and I don't want to be put in a rape cage. Okay, well, I'm going to point my gun at you until you change your mind. Well, it's either you go with the guy that's holding you for ransom, or you get shot then and there. So there's your little rundown on monopoly on violence. So how can a monopoly protect us from monopolies? It just, it's like an oxymoron, right? And the, the argument on, from a status that you're going to hear, uh, or you have already heard, I'm sure, without government, uh, public services, they won't be taken care of. Now... That's just ridiculous. Uh, the free market. Someone sees a need, they're going to fill a need. Um, I mean, there's proof of this. For example, in Detroit, um, well, you guys can do the, re the research. Uh, basically, a private uh, security uh, task force uh, has taken it upon themselves to use the free market, uh, protecting impoverished families, communities, uh, while making a profit. But but that's uh, that's but that's all besides the point. It's like saying, it's like having someone show up and just cut your fucking grass. All right, they they cut your grass. They do they do, they do an okay job. It's not it's not bad. They edge it up. They make a nice little stone path through your yard. You know it looks cool. But then they come up to your house. You notice they have a gun holstered. They knock on your door and say, Hey, look what I just did to your yard. Looks nice, doesn't it? Hey, by the way, based upon your income. You owe me a percentage of your annual your annual income. Um, pay me that for this. That's that's good compensation. But you say, well, no, I didn't ask for you to do that. Um, maybe I didn't want you to do that. I say, ah, well, and they put their hand on their gun. I say, well, just the way it is, I'm going door to door. Everybody's doing it. Um, besides, look, without me, you wouldn't have that stone path in your yard. Hmm. You guys, you guys see where I'm going with this? I could have did it myself. I could have hired somebody to do it voluntarily. But no. The answer is force people to, to take it. Force people. Because without coercion, how would we get anything done? So, 
now that we're talking about monopoly on violence and non-aggression principle and defense against burglars, um, I went on a bit of a rant the other day. What I was saying is we get so up in arms when it comes to gun rights. Uh, whatever jackass politician decides to, you know, pass some legislation that says ban or restrict this gun or require this license to carry this kind of gun, we get so, so furious. We start to, you know, they can take my gun from my cold dead hands and all this bullshit. You know, we start talking like that. But when it comes to taxation, we don't say, you can take my money from my cold dead hands. We say, oh, well, you know, it's how you build roads or, or whatever bullshit. Or you got to bomb those wedding parties in Yemen. You know, how, how else would we, we get that shit done, right? So my problem was this. While we're so busy <laughs> stretching our Second Amendment right, we're losing our property. We're, taxes are being stolen from us daily to be used to kill children, women, men, sons, daughters, you know, overseas. Um, they're stealing the money right out of our paychecks. But but that's, that's not too bad, right? Because at least we get our already restricted and uh, banned guns, right? You know? They haven't banned any guns yet, have they? Oh, wait, they have. They haven't restricted our guns. Oh, wait, they have restricted our guns. Well, shit, what are we getting so mad about? So I think, you know, let's just, let's let's start thinking more consistently. Um, I guess this goes out to the, to the status libertarians. Let, let's, let's start uh, being more consistent with our thought processes. All right, rant over. I have a little bit of a serious question to ask uh, all you guys watching out there. Um, I would really like some responses on this one. It's for the military members out there who maybe joined uh, while they're still mentally growing. You know, they didn't really know what they believed yet. So, you know, they said, oh, I'm going to serve my country. You know, they, they fell for the bullshit, right? Um, it's a question of desertion. Have you ever had an acquaintance, a friend, family, whatever? If you knew someone who joined the military but later discovered volunteerism, and the non-aggression principle, they're still on a serving contract with the military, the government. You know, whether or not a conflict arose or some war broke out or, or whatever that caused them to have this change of heart. Um, in this scenario, what would, you, what would you advise them to do? Should they desert? Should they um, go AWOL? Or maybe even find a way to get discharged, out of whether medical or any discharge. What would you tell this person that's in the military? you know what what advice would you give them have you do you have experience in, in this area have you gone through this um, if you're not in the military if you just never enlisted what, what would you tell this guy what would you tell this this individual that is now a voluntarist and understands that maybe I don't want to serve this monopoly on violence um, what advice would you give them to uh, to flee this post to get out of this line of work all right, so I guess a quick recap of, uh, of this little episode, the second episode. Um, we talked about the non-aggression principle, all right? So don't initiate violence upon another person, all right? And the same goes for them. They initiate violence upon you. You have the right to defend yourself, okay? Now we have voluntarism. That just means basically voluntary association, okay? So two people agreeing on something, voluntary, right? Right there. Um... And the third thing, uh, last episode was coercion, okay? That's basically a persuasion using violence, okay? Uh, you better do this or I'm going to shoot you. Oh, that's a good argument. All right. The love it or leave it fallacy. Well, you don't like this place, you can get the hell out of here. Say, no, I don't, I, I'm going to stay here. This is my property. This is my life. Um, why don't you get the hell out of here? You know what? Tell those status... Get the fuck out of here. Go to go to North Korea. That's that's your homeland. You know, if you don't like it, if you don't like Obama now, you want another Bush in office. Or if you don't like Bush, you want another Obama or whatever the hell you retards want. Um, go to North Korea. You guys got the same leader every year. You know, just maybe when he dies, his son takes power. You get uh, everything centrally planned. You guys like that shit, right? They got roads, I think. Um, they got good prisons, I hear. Uh, they they keep you in there for your whole life. You know, you speak out. You, all those guys get thrown in a cage. Um, I'm sure, why, why don't you stay this? Why don't you guys go ahead and, you know, hit paradise? Why don't you uh, leave this land for those who don't want to be on the plantation anymore? Those who don't want to pay taxes. Those, those who want to live free 
and uh, v uh, associate with each other voluntary and uh, voluntarily in a non-aggressive way. All right, political agnostics, remember, if you're going to take away one thing from this video, it's this. You own yourself, and you own what you create. No one else owns you, and no one else owns what you create. Now you can give up what you create voluntarily. Remember that. And thanks, guys, for watching uh, Liberty in Brief. Uh, I appreciate you guys stopping by and sharing this moment with me. So once again, thanks for watching. Signing off. This is Liberty in Brief, and I'll see you next week.